Hey guys, this is the TAG ball screw mill, ball screw CNC mill. Uh, I modeled it from scratch. I've been working on it for probably the past three or four months in my spare time. It's, uh, it's ready to share with everybody now. So I have everything modeled here. And you can see I will move the axes so the table moves to, to its limit till it hits the, uh, the end plate and then the same in the other direction and then if I move it back it moves till it's a uh, hundred thousandths away from the column and if I move it forward it moves till uh, till this part of the saddle here uh, hits, hits the front stepper plate. By the way if you flip this screw around like I have it shown here, you'll get 200 thousandths of extra travel. If you have it the original way, which is a thread down, uh, the screw will hit this plate before the saddle does. Uh, then the same thing with the, the Z. The Z saddle will go all the way down until uh, it hits inside there, there's a ball nut. And up here uh, you can't see it because the guard's in the way, but it, it goes to where the real limits are. And the the headstock will go up and down on its dovetail and then move the whole thing. Uh, the motor will pivot till it hits the screw. And then if you want to go back to the original position, just hit revert. And I have it in the, uh, the original position will be where I probably most TAG users will put their home switches. So the X will be all the way on this side. You'll probably have the home switch here because you already have wires there for the stepper. Uh, the Y, the home is probably going to be in the front. So this is the Y is all the way as forward as possible and the Z is as high as possible. So all the details are on this. If I show you, let me show you around the model a little bit. If we go to the analysis, and here I have a lot of cross sections here. So if you look at the center line, you can see you can see everything's there. So I took the entire thing apart and measured every single component and modeled it. So even the stops on the screws are there. Here's the Y screw. Here's the X screw. So this looks like it's not concentric, but it is concentric. This is because the threads are drawn on the lead screw, on the, excuse me, on the ball screw. So it's showing the helix here. Uh, but if you were to suppress the threads on the screw, this the screw would be perfectly show up perfectly concentric with the ball nut. So this is a good section to look at if you want to see how things are put together. And uh, the headstock, here's a section through somewhere in the middle of the headstock. I forgot where I put it. Same thing here. Uh, this is concentric. It's just because of the helix. It looks like it's not. Uh, here we have the X ball screw. Here we have the X ball nut, and this also shows the the gibs. So the gib on the back is the master gib, so that's line to line, and then on the front, this is the tapered gib, so it would just move in a little bit when you tighten the screws. Uh, here, this is the headstock dovetail, so you can see we're touching on this side. And in this side we have a gap. Okay, and then here's the headstock dovetail lock or the clamp here. So now with the sections through, through there, and uh, if you were to tighten the screw here, it would it would lock on the dovetail. So all all the features are in the mill. Uh, if you look at the joints here. Um, 
everything at the bottom, all this, that's not labeled, they're just screws, so don't worry about those. But if you want to adjust any of the joints, uh, let me take a step back a second. Um, everything here is a sub-assembly. So this is the top level assembly, and then there's the frame sub-assembly, the Y-way sub-assembly, the Y-saddle, the table, the Z-ways, the Z headstock, and the motor. So those are all major sub-assemblies that are brought into this top level assembly. And they are uh, assembled to each other here. So if you look at the joints, um, when we did the limits, let's say the limit of the table movement, so the table will go from here and then its other extreme will be here. It'll hit it'll hit the gib adjustment screw or the gib adjustment spacer on that side and it'll hit it it'll hit it on the other side. So if you want to adjust that joint uh, where is that? So that's called the table, right? So any of these that have a drop down on the drop down is a distance and if you do edit joint limits you can see for example the table goes from zero maximum to negative 11.5 minimum so it has 11 and a half inches of travel uh, you can adjust those numbers or or make it snap to a central position uh, if you if you want to change it uh, and then another thing you can do is probably let's say for the dovetail so the dovetail you know in practice you're gonna have this locked so let's say you want it right here for for your application uh, go to the headstock one bring down the drop down and lock it so now if I try to move the headstock on its dovetail it'll move the whole head it'll move the whole saddle okay so and if I unlock that now the headstock will move on its dovetail and when it gets to the end of the travel it'll move the saddle and if you want to go back to where I had them just hit uh, revert and everything will go back to the origin or the home position of the take so that's that's what this top level assembly looks like now again uh, everything was modeled as a sub-assembly so if I switch to, uh, you know, here's a table subassembly, for example, and inside this subassembly, uh, it has a couple other subassemblies. So it has a transmission. So if I open that, okay, and then this transmission has a couple other uh, subassemblies. You can see that have the three blocks. Those are subassemblies. And here's the uh, Y subassembly the Y saddle. Uh, almost everything here I modeled as individual parts. So for example here's here's my uh, folder structure so you can see everything is individually modeled with with a his sketch. Uh, everything's individual and then they were brought into for example, the transmission. So all these individual parts were brought into this transmission subassembly, and then that transmission subassembly was put into the table, and then that whole subassembly was put into the top level assembly. Uh, so this is called a bottom up modeling approach. And the reason I did a bottom up modeling approach instead of a top down modeling approach was I figured if you're looking at CAD for the TAG mill, uh, you might be modifying it. And for example, you know, a lot of people are uh, replacing the stepper mounts with uh, a belt drive, for example. Um, so I didn't want anything tied to anything else from a component standpoint. So if you if you end up, you know, if you want to replace this whole this whole section here, it won't affect anything else in the mill. You can just change the subassembly that has a transmission, or remove that whole subassembly and rebuild it from scratch from the parts. Uh, I have modeled and then model your own parts. So that's why I did a, a bottom up approach. Did it. So actually the only area I did do a top down technique is the Y saddle. So let me open that up. And 
that has another subassembly in here. So this this file uh, Y saddle, you can see this is modeled all top down, and then at the very end it has the joints. So this is the only one uh, I used that technique because this had a lot going on with the tapered Gibbs, and it was easier to, to do in one file. And all, furthermore, this particular subassembly, uh, I don't think you can modify it. Like I don't think you can remove any of these parts in a real mill and replace it with anything else. Uh, it's just not conducive to that. So that's how I did the modeling. And let me switch to my one my one note just to show you. Uh, I have the mill entirely taken apart, and actually it, these are the big subassemblies. And I took these further apart after this picture was taken, and everything was measured. Uh, here's an example of how I measured things. Like this is a this is a this is the saddle, the Y saddle. So uh, I used pins here to get the measurement, and then I put that same pin inside the CAD. So you can see this one inch, three hundred fifty-five thousandths, same same number on the dial caliper. So that's that's how I modeled most of this. I measured the whole thing with uh, dial calipers and gauge pins, uh, and I'd say most things are probably plus or minus five thousandths of an inch. So it's pretty it's pretty close. Uh, I have a few uncertainties, so I'll walk you through this. Well, this dimension here, the six point six eight seven five, uh, that's plus or minus forty thousandths of an inch. I don't have a good way to measure that. That's from basically the the pivot of the column to where the uh, the mount starts for the Z. Uh, then this bushing is the bushing that goes in here. I couldn't remove it, so I, you know, its depth might be plus or minus quite a bit. The headstock has a lot of uncertainties because these surfaces here, they were all angled. Uh, I don't know if there was some warpage after it was extruded or it was draft purposely designed in. I, I'm not sure, but it was difficult to model all that. I tried to get the main details right. Um, so if you want to read through this, feel free, just pause the video. I have the comments on the bottom. Uh, I think I had originally modeled this with threads. I might have deleted the threads later. I probably did. Yeah, I think I took all these threads out uh, as I went on. Here's an interesting thing. These these dowel pins on the ball nuts, I couldn't pull them out, but on every, on all three of the ball nuts, the one closest to this hole was longer than the one furthest from the hole. So I don't know if that was, if there are actually different lengths and it was done that way on purpose, or if they're both the same length and just this one was not inserted into the hole as, as far as this one, uh, but I couldn't pull them out. So I modeled them as two different lengths. But uh, back to the CAD. I think that's the extent of it. So if you oh uh, the colors, I made everything as close as I could to the real mill colors. Uh, so actually, uh, I think there was a. An appearance for anodized aluminum, so that's what I used here, and uh, so all the aluminum has the anodized aluminum appearance, uh, and then the black one, which is still aluminum, has a, a black appearance, and uh, here on the on the base, for example, excuse me, the frame. Let me open up the frame. So the frame is steel, so this appearance was, a, I think it was a polished steel or a ground steel, I forget what the option was, and then the rest was blue paint. So I try to make it as accurate as I could from an appearance standpoint. And these, the uh, way covers are some sort of like a rubber, a matte rubber. And, and you can hide those, of course, so you can see 
see the system a little bit better. Oh, the, uh, the limit here, when you move this all the way to the back, I have it set. I have it set so this metal piece that holds the swarf guard is a hundred thousandths away from the back of the column. It might be too tight actually, but you can fool around with that. So that's the whole mill. If you find anything wrong with it, uh, let me know. I have some some weird thing going on. I'll fix it later. Uh, but sometimes this <coughs> this stepper goes out in space, and I don't know why. But uh, if you just if you see that, and you move the table, it'll it'll snap right back. So I don't know why that's happening. And then if I revert it, then it's fine. So it's something weird weird is going on there. I'll get to the bottom of it another time. And actually, when I open this file from the beginning, this this stepper motor's out in the middle of nowhere for some reason. But just just if, just move the table if that happens, and and then revert position, and and you'll be fine. Most of the screws I modeled from scratch. And uh, here, let me open one of these screws. So they don't have threads on it. So that way it's. Uh, better for your system so it computes faster. So that's the majority of the screws. All the 1032 screws are like that. Uh, some of the screws that were imported from McMaster uh, I, I kept as is. So that's uh, here if I show you. This cross section. Yeah for example these flathead screws that hold the ball nut in place. Uh, they're they're imported from McMaster, so they have the threads. So there's there's a few of the screws that have the threads, uh, but the probably about 90% of them are my model, so it has no threads and it'll be easier to spin around that way. And the, here you can see the ball screw has the threads too. If if this slows down your system. Here's the ball screw. Uh, you can just suppress the last fixture feature. So the last feature in each ball screw is the helix. So if you just turn that off, maybe it'll make your system a little bit faster. And this is uh, this is pretty accurate with the pitch of the ball screw. It's 2.5 millimeter uh, pitch. I think in metric terms they call it module. I forget. Okay, so that's the Tag Mill. Enjoy modifying it, and thank you for watching.